Um, welcome to Family Worship at St Peter's. Um, my name is Liz and with Rachel, we all know Rachel, our lovely children and youth worker, um, we will be leading worship today. So I'm just going to start with our good morning God prayer. So it's got some actions if you want to follow along, um, but we'll start now. So good morning God, thank you for this new day. Here are my ears. Please help me to listen to what you want me to hear today. Here is my heart. I'm sorry for the bad things I've done. Please forgive me. Help me to worship you now. And show my love for you with a clean heart and soul, my mind and all my strength. Amen. Thanks Liz. Well, good morning. Hello. Um, and happy Mother's Day. Um, yeah, thank you to all you mothers and guardians and yeah, wonderful ladies. Um, thank you for all that you do for us. And thank you to a lot of people. Um, you know, there might be other people that you look up to who have guided you and just think what are some characteristics what do you really love about those people well for me personally and the special ladies in my life um, they've always had a kind heart um, they know when to sacrifice and think of others um, and they know how to treat me fairly and they'll teach me and help me to know right from wrong but they'll really look after me as well and support me and forgive me and just be there for me and in this story um we kind of learn a bit about you know jesus teaching someone right for wrong but about you know him taking care of this person as well and showing his love for them and helping other people to do the same so i'm going to pass it to liz who's going to do an activity happy mother's day and i'll catch you later for the story okay over to you, Liz. So in our story, which we're going to hear in a minute, we're going to be looking at how Jesus forgave someone. Now, Jesus knows our hearts and knows when we are truly sorry. So to remind us of that in the story, today's activity, we're going to be making hearts. Um, so you'll need um, some paper or some card, um, maybe some scissors, um, a pen or some colours, and then if you want to decorate any other way, you could use anything else um, that you have in your house as well. So um, for the heart activity, you all you need to do is cut out um, a heart shape um, and then decorate it. Now you could do all sorts of things with it. You could um, write something on it from the story so that you want to remember. So I um, did one here and I wrote on it, um, the world needs forgiving hearts. That was something that I want to remember and I decorated with a few stickers. Um, maybe you could draw um, a face or something on it to remind you that Jesus um, loves us and he looks in our hearts for when we're truly sorry. Or you could maybe write something that you love about someone um, on your heart or maybe things that you want to say sorry for, get it off your heart onto the, the heart that you make um, and say sorry to God for those things. Um, or you could literally just decorate it. So I've just done some some colouring on this one. Um, you could decorate it in however you, way you like um, just to help you remember um, the story that we're gonna hear in a minute. And hopefully when you look at your hearts, depending on what you do, whether you decorate or you write something um, or whatever you just suit to do. And when you look at your heart that you will remember this story um, and how much Jesus loves us. Okay, so um, yeah, we'll hear the story now. Hey Liz! Hi Rachel! It's great to see you and I've got something exciting to show you. And why it's very exciting is because it's one, sandy, two, squidgy, and three, delicious. Ooh, very intriguing. Um, is it an edible sandcastle? No. No. Uh, okay, so let's have a go. Show us what it is. Can I have a bit of a drum roll? Please. 
Yes. The sand pudding. Ooh. Ooh. What makes it even better is it's not just a sand pudding, it's a story sandy pudding. Or a sandy story pudding. A story sandy pudding that Ali afterwards. What could be better? I know. I know. <laughs> so would you like to make it with me and I'll tell you the story as you go along? Oh yes please. What what do I need? A yogurt. Mm -hmm. Or biscuits. I use digestus because it's like sand and there's some sand in the story. Glass to put it in, a clean plastic bag for a rolling pin and two spoons. I'm ready? Could you hold your bag and glass please? So in the story um, not lots of things, not lots of action happens, but a lot of things happen in people's hearts. So you're going to add things into your bag and glass, which are going to remind us um, what's happening spiritually and emotionally in people's hearts and with our relationships with God. And that will help us to understand what God wants us to learn from the story. Okay, does that make okay. sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the bag and the glass represent people's hearts. Yeah, my goodness. There is this lady, right? So could you hold your first biscuit up for us, please? Biscuit. The sin, the bad thing that this lady did, isn't something that you would go to prison for in this country today. Um, but it was still really bad because it emotionally hurt people around her. But most importantly, it hurt her relationship with God. So Liz, I'm going to ask you to do something sad. That biscuit, can you put it into the bag, please? Because and crumble it up because her relationship with God the people got a bit crumbled up that's very sad one day Jesus went to the temple and lots of people came around him hello okay? but <laughs> the religious leaders and teachers what how do you yeah. think they're feeling very angry they came to Jesus and can you guess who they brought with them <sighs> the sad lady who'd done something wrong they brought her along, probably forced her to be there. Can you guess who else they were angry at? Jesus? Uh. Yeah. They reminded Jesus that in Moses' law, there was a big punishment of death by throwing rocks at someone. And yes, what the lady had done was wrong and she needed to stop and change and not do it again. But Jesus wasn't happy with what they were trying to do because Jesus knew their hearts. So Liz, can you get your rolling pin, please? And are you ready? Start bashing away. Jesus knew they were angry in an unfair way and a bad way because they didn't like that Jesus said he was God and they didn't like that people would like to listen to him teach. So this was an example of when they came to Jesus to trick him to do something wrong. So they asked him that really difficult question about, are you going to try to punish her with stones by throwing them at her? Oh no, how, please say that's got a happy ending. How, how did Jesus react and what, what did he do? He wrote on the ground. What? Well, he didn't say anything. He just wrote in the ground in silence. Yeah, to begin with, he simply got down and began writing on the ground, which was perhaps dusty or sandy in those days. All right, so he could write in it. And what Jesus said when he, after he wrote something was really interesting. He said to everyone around, is there anyone here who has never, never done wrong? Person who has never sinned can be the first person to throw a stone at the lady to punish her. Hmm, how unusual. I bet it was like a really tense movie scene but in real life. Yep. You know how earlier we talked about what the lady's sin had hurt others and her relationship with God and so you crumbled the biscuit to represent that. Do you remember? Yes. The thing is, the reason Jesus said that, I think, is because he knew everyone's hearts there and he knew that everyone there had also damaged their relationship with God. So can you put this another biscuit in your bag, the second one? Oh, okay. And crumble that too, please. Got my biscuit. Crumble it. Because all of them had done things, right? So they were unfairly judging this lady. 
And that was a big problem that Jesus noticed. They were pointing the finger at the lady when they too had broken relationships with God that they hadn't sorted. They all realised they were guilty of bad things too. So can you guess what they did? Did, did they go away? Yep. One by one. So did the lady like make a quick escape and like not have to be punished or did she run away or what happened? She didn't need to run because Jesus protected her by treating her right and getting others to do the same. See, good punishments like the ones your parents or what you might give to your daughter, um, such as needing to sit on the naughty step or maybe when she's a bit older, need to be grounded. They're designed not to harm um, you, are they? But to help you to learn that there are consequences for your actions and to learn not to repeat them. So Jesus knew this lady's heart too. How do you think she would have been feeling when she was dragged into the temple in front of all those people and in front of Jesus? Probably really scared and really like upset and sorry. Just didn't want to be there. That's my guess too. And because Jesus loved her, and Jesus' um, aim was to help her to become right with God again, and he didn't love the actions of everyone, but he did love them too, right? Like he loves this little. So he wanted them learn to learn too, not to repeat it. So what did Jesus do next? To be continued. But for now, let's talk to God in a song called Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. And let's ask God to help us to get our hearts in a good place so that we can see the world and live the way that pleases him. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Shining in the light of your glory Oh, how your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy, holy. See you high lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. I lift it up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love 
as we sing holy, 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 to see you high and lifted up, shining the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, 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 I want to see you. So he stood up and he said to her, Woman, all those people have gone. Has no one judged you guilty? And then she said to him, No one has judged me, sir. Then Jesus said to her, So I don't judge you either. You may go now, but don't sin again. She went off. And Jesus had offered her forgiveness. Wow, she must have really appreciated that, to say the least. I think it's true and we could all admit that we've done things that have crumbled our relationship with God. So that's why Jesus, who was perfect, came and died for all of those sins for us. When we trust Jesus, he'll forgive us. God wipes all our sins away and lives in our hearts with the Holy Spirit. It's like a clean start. So can you put a clean glass in front of you, Liz, to represent clean start, a clean heart? Right, so as I said, we need to be careful, all right? So yes, God might want us to use us to help others and their relationships, um, get their relationships with God good, but we need to protect our own hearts, all right? And prevent our own hearts from making silly mistakes like the religious leaders did. So if you think that someone has done something that doesn't please God, the first thing I'd probably recommend is you need to be quite certain that God definitely isn't happy with what has happened. And knowing the Bible and talking to God and learning about um, seeing the world through God's eyes, his way is helpful. And it can also be helpful, you know, like, like with this lady to just go talk to her, okay? To talk to see if she was sorry or see the other side of the story. Okay, maybe not on this one, but often, I don't know about you Liz, often I assume something has happened, but I don't necessarily, and I get really angry at someone, but actually there might be a different side of the story I haven't thought about before. Yeah. So what else do you think might be helpful to remember Liz? Such as what Jesus reminded the religious leaders and the crowd about not to judge others and we all need God's forgiveness too? Absolutely. Forgive because God forgave you. But also, if it is appropriate to say something, if anything at all, it's really important before we say anything that we make sure that our relationships with God and we've asked for forgiveness, like our hearts look like your pudding, <laughs> we have forgiveness because before we tell others, because what was happening here, um, perhaps it would seem, and what does happen sometimes is we go and they go and they say, oh, you need to change, you need to do this and you've done this wrong, when actually there were things that they've done wrong that they weren't right with God yet. It's a really important thing that they needed to make sure that their hearts were right with God first 
before and that's why all of them walked away because they knew that they were all guilty there's a really important bible verse that talks about this can i read it to you liz yes so it's in matthew chapter 7 verses 1 to 5 it says do not judge and criticize and condemn others unfairly with an attitude of self-righteousness and purity as though assuming the office of a judge you know thinking that you're better and and you can do that so that you will not be judged unfairly how can you say to your brother let me get the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye you hypocrite play actor pretender first get the log out of your own eye then you can see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye wow so basically in today's story people try to punish a lady but jesus stopped them by getting them to understand that they too need to change and get right with god and they should offer her forgiveness yes basically yes wow so i I've, I've learned a lot of important life lessons today plus i've learned how to make a delicious sand pudding or a sandy story pudding <laughs> hey, i'm gonna have a little bit of my pudding now. and people at home can make these too can't they you know Ooh. they think about god's forgiveness or you could even pray as you do it you could say sorry to god and then put the forgiveness on top um but you're also going to lead us in some prayers aren't you liz a bit later yes i am so people can also get some sand actual sand not eat the sand but they can get some sand out ready for later can't they yeah well enjoy your pudding and enjoy that and thanks a bunch um for listening yeah and thank you so much for telling the story um, cool. Well, I'm going to be my pudding and I'll speak to you soon. All right, bye. Bye. For our prayers today, I'm going to be writing in the sand like Jesus did in the story. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all of your creation and you've created everything that we can see. Well, the world seems a little bit strange right now, so we pray for those who maybe feel a little bit worried or sad. Please be with them and give them peace. Father, thank you for listening to us and for being there and for loving us. Thank you that when we say sorry, you forgive us, just like you forgave the lady in the story today. Help us to see others through your eyes. Well, please bless schools. This week will have been the first week back at school for many. We pray for teachers and for everyone at school. We pray that you would keep them safe, protect them and keep them happy. Help us to be kind to each other. As today is Mothering Sunday or Mother's Day, we pray for mothers. Thank you for all that they do for us and the love that they share. We pray for mums in all their forms, maybe those who have a difficult relationship with their mum too, or their mum is no longer here, and maybe those who want to be mums. We pray for all other caregivers too, and parents and guardians, and all those who look after us. Heavenly Father, we pray all these things for your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um,